All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to True Crime Loser. I hope you're doing well. Previously on True Crime Loser, we went over the first 40 minutes of the Sarah Boone interrogation. She is set to go on trial for all of this stuff in about a month, December of this year. February 2020, she called 911 on herself to report that a, quote, kind of like hide and seek kind of thing game went unintentionally and horrifically wrong. And her boyfriend, George, now is dead and purple and stiff and in the shape of a suitcase. They send out detectives to do an investigation. She does a sworn statement that night where she is very clear that they were not drunk. They were not drunk, and they were having a wholesome day of puzzles and playing and painting. And at a certain point, they were like, "Uh, I don't want to paint anymore. Do you want to play hide-and-go-seek? Even though there weren't any kids there, and it's just a small townhouse. But do you want to play hide-and-go-seek? Yeah. All right. Tag. You're it. What? I don't know, hide and seek. Anyway, George, get in the suitcase. So George gets in the suitcase. It's so funny and it's so wholesome. She wholesomely zips him up in the suitcase while they're laughing. It's so funny. Everybody's laughing. Well, then Sarah went to bed thinking that he was going to, according to her, that he was going to get out on his own. She went to bed, came down the next day and found that it was a, just a big accident. And the, the detectives okay, are like, okay, well, Sarah, we're going to need, uh, is it okay if we take your phone tonight? And she says, yes, hands the phone over. They say, Sarah, can we take a la- the laptop? She says, yes, hands the laptop over. And they say, okay, Sarah, we would like you to come in tomorrow and we'll do, we'll keep talking about this. Will you come in tomorrow? She agrees. That night... Uh, They find, the medical examiner finds that poor George, head is swollen, head is bruised, lips busted, all scratched up. So they say, all right, that doesn't really fit with the wholesome day where everybody's laughing. Also, they give the phone and the laptop to their tech person, and the tech person pulls up two videos and a still picture of Sarah torturing Poor George, where George is in the suitcase and she's filming and the suitcase is bumping up and down and she's going, fuck you. This is what it feels like when you cheat on me. And again, completely opposite of the wholesome day where everybody's having a good day. So heading into the interrogation, the detectives are armed with a lot more than we normally see. It's extremely satisfying watching the chunk that we're going to go over today because nine times out of ten when someone like Sarah Boone does something like this there's they don't get a video or if there is a video it's some blurry security camera footage from two towns over that you can barely see this was her cell phone a cell phone that she's the only one that has the password for it and the facial recognition so it's definitely her it's her voice it's right there and so anytime she wants to pull the narcissistic it was such a good day everybody's having a good day the detectives can say the video it's kind of like the chats for a to catch a predator interrogation they're like i wasn't gonna do anything and they slide in well there's 40,000 messages with the decoy they kind of get to use the video as um as just a be all end all no sarah and so the first 40 minutes of the interrogation they stick with uh so there were injuries that came back his head was swollen that doesn't fit the and Sarah not knowing that they have the video that's going to come in like a baseball bat over the head in about 40 minutes she's going I have no idea I we did not lay a hand on each other I have no idea how he got those injuries and they're going well was there anyone else there and she's going no but we did not get out of sorts it was a good day everybody's having a good day and they let that go for you know 35 40 minutes and then the laptop that has just been sitting on the table turns into the device that completely ruins sarah boone's life they pull up the video of sarah going this is what you get when you cheat on me and and, 
and uh, George going, I can't breathe, babe, babe, I can't, let me out. And she makes it, I think, about 10 seconds of the two-minute video. And then for the first time, her voice isn't this loud, you know, manipulative. We were not drunk. We, no one got out of sorts. All of a sudden, she leans back in her chair and goes, I don't want to watch it, please. And that's where we pick up today. And like I said in the last video, I wish after they showed her the video it completely crumbles the nonsense story that she had of the it was i just i went to bed because it was so fun and funny and he and everybody was and he had two fingers out that's her big thing in this chunk too is they're going all right so the last time we talked you said that everybody was laughing and that he had two fingers out and that you went to bed and she's going yeah and she stands up and she does this thing where she's motioning i zipped it up but i left this much so we can like get out and when she's doing this she looks like a little goblin woman she looks like a villain from a b movie she's like and the interrogator's like sit down because she stands up and she's going i i did it i didn't zip it up all the way he had two fingers out which you'll see she kind of clings on to that is i had two i left him a space and it's like well it didn't help sarah the, the fact that he's purple and stuck permanently in the shape of a suitcase the the space you leave didn't help so, but like I said, I wish they would have just showed her the video and sat in silence, just waiting for her to say something. But the male detective jumps in and he goes, so the last time we talked to you, you were saying everything's funny and that there was two fingers and the video. And also what the video shows too is that the suitcase is in a bunch of different positions and upside down, painting the picture that she not only was saying that's my name don't wear it out but also flipping the thing and he's upside down and he can't breathe and it's truly horrific so the female detective wants to get sarah to admit that she was you know flipping it around and moving it around and across the room because that just shows how horrible the whole situation was so she's going so the the female detective is trying to set it up like he's in different positions here and he's in different positions here and the only way that would have happened is if and then sarah not realizing that that is pretty malicious and could bump up the charges she goes i flipped it she doesn't sarah doesn't understand that the you probably wouldn't want to admit to that and so the female detective is surprised, like, oh, all right, well, that worked really smoothly. I figured I was going to have to pressure her and do a couple different strategies, but it was just like right away, I flipped it. And they're like, oh, all right. And then she does a thing that she does throughout, you know, four or five times throughout the whole thing where she pulls back and she goes, guys, this is killing me right now. Like she, she pulls out of the this it was such a good day this is not fair you know she has this loud voice and she's willing to get in you know they're leaning in and she's leaning back and it's getting loud and then when she's really getting just bashed over the head though with the video and the facts she'll lean back and go this is killing me right now i don't think she had any idea how hardcore a homicide interrogation is like she feels like she can do like a safe word well they'll pull back okay sarah we understand this is probably really hard we'll we'll step back but you know she goes this is killing me right now and it's like oh really does it kind of feel like you're in a suitcase and can't breathe does it feel like the walls are getting getting uh closer and you're running out of space sarah should we flip you upside down to see if that helps feel, you feel better and then we get into the first kind of strategy that she uses after seeing the video that really just changes everything. They're asking her, why did, you know, why? He's begging to be let out. He says he can't breathe. And she's going, my plan wasn't to leave him in the suitcase. And they're like, well, 
you did. And then she goes, well, it's because I went to sleep. And they go, well, why didn't you let him out when you were in the same room as him filming? And she goes, my plan wasn't to go upstairs. And then the female detective goes, first, you were laughing. But at the end, and then Sarah interrupts her and goes, no. No, it was not malicious. No malicious. And I think that Sarah must have got like being a lawyer for dummies or surviving your homicide allegation for idiots. You know, one of those books or maybe she searched it on the internet like, what am I going to do in this interrogation? And she learned that to say unintentional or that no you know, malicious intent, and then also no maliciousness. But what she always says is no malicious, no malicious. And she didn't get the material completely down because also at one point she goes, there was no malicious content. She's adamant, you know, with every fiber of her being that there was not one ounce of malicious content. I was thinking that'd be funny if that's what her lawyer, when we get to the trial in a month, that's what the lawyer would argue. Like, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're not here to decide guilt or innocence. We are here to decide if there was malicious content. The jury is just looking at them, blinking slowly. So she, she cuts her off with the, you know, it's like she just read it in a, online or something. No, no malicious no malicious and then you know they're asking her again it's just the same sort of thing the, her story does not match the video so a lot of this first part is that's not what the video shows and I think this part will come up during the trial she goes well I didn't think he was panicky think about that he's in the suitcase upside down the thing is vibrating and bouncing back and forth in terror. And he's going, babe, I can't breathe. And she goes, I didn't know he was panicky. And then they go, so pushing up and begging he can't breathe. And then she gets a truly horrifying tone of voice and goes, George has done that in the past. Like a woe is me kind of thing. It's like. I think, you're, I think you might hear that chunk, Sarah, at your murder trial. That is just completely insane. And then she goes, I thought it was a boy crying wolf kind of thing. And as you'll see, she really tries not to get to this point of like, I thought it was a boy crying wolf because it just looks completely horrible and out of touch and insane and it just doesn't it's not a good look but she ends up there a few times maybe like three or four times as the interrogation goes on because at a certain point she has to say something and if they're going why didn't you let him out why didn't you let him out he's begging to be let out and she's go well i didn't intentionally leave him in the suitcase it's like okay well you didn't let him out. He was asking, well, I went to sleep. Well, why did you go upstairs? Well, because I thought he was going to get out. Well, why did you think he was going to get out? Because I left him two fingers. Well, on the video, it doesn't show two fingers. Well, I, didn't, I wasn't planning to go to sleep. Well, you did. And then around that point and that, that site, that little conversation happens 25 times probably in the next hour. A few of the times, because she just can't find anything to say, she'll end up with, I thought, again, I thought it was the boy that cried wolf. And then the detectives, in a way, accept that, just being like, all right, yeah, we'll take that one, because that's not going to be a defense there. Okay, and then I would say maybe 10 minutes after they show her the video, and she... Again, imagine not knowing that that video ex existed. I, I, it's my opinion. I think she thought she deleted it. And so when they showed it to her, her mind went, exploded in 15 million directions because she was thinking, I bet, 
where how did they get that i deleted it now what am i going to do my stories are insane i just got to kind of ignore it but that's horrible and maybe 10 minutes after she sees it it's the first time where she kind of again brings it back and she goes i don't mean to sound negative and i don't know if i can say this but it seems like you guys are feeding me like trying to get her to admit that she put george in a suitcase and then went to bed and, they, and the female detective goes, no, we're trying to show you a video that you can no longer watch because you don't want to see how you acted on it. And I thought that that was a really good strategy by the detective. And they don't, in my opinion, use that strategy enough. I, there's so many frustrating parts where they're letting her play her game where they're going, she's going, no malice, and it was unintentional, and I didn't mean to go upstairs and go to bed and not open it for him. And I just think over and over then they should have said, you can't even, I, I wish they would have said, you can't even watch the video. Why can't you watch the video? Is it because it's horrible? Let's put it on. If you're downplaying it, let's put on the video. Should we? But... At one point, which is coming up, the female detective just puts it on and it makes for a truly amazing moment. Um, all right, so another absurd part of it is the female detective goes, you remember making that video? And Sarah has a big choice of to either say yes or no. And she goes with no. No recollection at all of making that z a video. Zero. None. And... So they're like, why? Why don't you don't remember? And she goes, as if it's just obvious, because we have been drinking. And that creates another huge contradiction from the day before and even 15 minutes before, before the big video changed everything, because she was adamant on them not being drunk, especially her. George is a wasted mess that can't handle the stresses of life and drinks all the time, but she doesn't want to drink, needs to have her wits about her, all of this stuff, and now I don't remember the video. Why? Because we had been drinking. It's like, okay. And then they're, they go over the just the conversation they have a bunch of times again where it's like well you didn't let him out well i because i went to bed well you uh, why didn't why'd you go to bed because it wasn't my plan to go to bed and she starts doing my plan this it wasn't my plan to do that it was my plan to do this and just to get it all down i listened to that chunk a few times and wrote down hammered out the details of her plan so here it is without further ado this is Sarah Boone's plan, the details of it from that day. Main part number one out of three of her plan, not to leave him in the suitcase. She's very clear about that. It was not part of the plan. Didn't go, as you know, sometimes plans, they don't go, they don't go according to plan. And so she did. Okay, part number two, it was not her plan to go upstairs. She didn't. She was not planning on that, but all according to her, it just was so fun, and everybody is laughing that, whoa, no, look at me, I'm, I'm going upstairs. It wasn't my plan to go upstairs, but I am. Okay. All right, so that's chunk number two. Chunk number three, it was her plan to, if she ended up going upstairs, you know, if, if part of the plan number two didn't go as planned, and she did end up upstairs, her plan was to wait for him and not go to sleep. And so you could see the plan did not go according to plan. And so they call her out on that and we get a phrase that she will cling on to for dear life. And that is, so your plan, you know, Sarah, it just, everything you said you did. And then she goes, not intentionally and again i think she got that from like surviving your interrogation for morons just keep saying not intentionally not intentionally in an hour when she's handcuffed and she's just utterly furious that she wasn't able to manipulate her way out of it she's 
sitting there with this little mean goblin woman look on her face and the detective is standing up and she's just simply saying, not intentionally, not intentionally, trying to, I guess, subliminally get it in right at the very end. So she goes over her plan. It wasn't my plan to leave him in the suitcase. It wasn't my plan to go upstairs. It was my plan to wait for him and it wasn't my plan to fall asleep. Okay. And then the, the male detective goes, what did you think was going to happen to him? You, he's in a small space, and she's going, I left the two holes. I z- unzipped it with one finger the next day. I left two holes from him. The reason I went upstairs is I thought everybody was having fun, and he could easily get out. And the male detective is going, there's a video. He didn't get out. There, if, he, if there was holes, maybe he would have done it. And she just is getting slapped around, and then she goes... It was the drinking. And it was the drinking. I thought he was okay. And then they, it kind of slows down again. They're like, all right, yeah, it was the drinking. And then they give her a chance, maybe an out, or I guess it's possible that it could be, because it sounds like George was, they were just abusive to, her, to each other. But she had gone on and on and on about how much she did for George and how much she took care of him and and how, you know, he would beat her up from time to time. And so they give her an out. Do you get tired of caring for him? Was it just too much and you snapped and you suitcased him to death? Is that what happened? And she is very sure that that's not what happened. They'd had, they were having a good period and it was just a wholesome day gone awry. And a funny thing that cracks me up is she won't even admit to stuff that is just right there on the video. There's a laptop two inches from her face and the male detective goes, he's begging to be let out. He says he doesn't have enough air and you're telling him, fuck you. And it's just right there on the video. There's really no arguing with it. And Sarah just goes, no. <laughs> That's a little thing. She, if you, even confronting her with someone that can be, with something that can be proven right there, she just goes, no, no. <laughs> Cracked me up. All right. So then we move to the next big portion of this one. And I titled it the trying to assume portion because the whole it wasn't my plan to leave him in the suitcase and to go upstairs and go to bed section, as you can imagine, doesn't go well. The video looms over that section. So now here we are in the trying to assume section. And this one, like three or four different times she goes okay so wait but again you guys think I just and she's trying to make the whole thing just sound absurd so you guys think I just got him in the suitcase and then went Betty by and they're like that's what happened that's that's exactly what happened and she goes okay n- wait wait hold on but again you guys are trying to assume that I zipped him up in the suitcase and then went night, night. Is that what you guys are trying to portray me as? And again, they're just like, that is exactly what happened. She goes, okay, all right. Well, again, but also, you guys think that I just got him in the suitcase and then went upstairs and went to bed. And they're like, Sarah, yeah, that's what happened. And she's going, you are trying to assume. And they're going, we're not assuming anything. We haven't assumed anything. There's a video. And then, you know, that part's going and she goes, the female detective at a certain point goes, it's just the video explains itself. It really does. And then Sarah, for a minute, she was going to go big. She goes, you don't think I've thought of that? Which, 
for a second. Like I said in the first video, she's testing stories. She's saying things, gauging reaction, and then going, no, nope, they're not going for that one. I'm going this way. So for just a split second, Sarah was going to go with the story that she knew about the video all the time, that she knew they were going to find it, that she was planning on them finding the video. But so she goes, you don't think I thought of that regarding the video? And then she realizes right there in real time that she is not capable of pulling off that type of story and that type of line. And so she completely bails and goes, but again, if you don't mind, please, you are assuming I got him in there and then just went to sleep. And they're going, that's what happened. I could watch this section all day. You're trying to assume that I... No, Sarah, that is, that's exactly what the video shows. And then she'll say something like, so wait, but again, and it's just priceless. Let me get a quick drink. Okay, and then another thing she does, so the my plan section, it wasn't my plan. And then it moved into the you're trying to assume. And then another thing she does when she's just getting completely schooled is she'll get very loud and she'll say something like, this is horrific. She interrupts everything. This is horrific. And then when they say, start to say, uh, yeah, she'll scream the word again, horrific, and interrupt them. And I think that's her maybe taking some control back if I just get really loud and when they talk, you know, just one up. I'm horrific. The detective is kind of just wait for the battery to run out. She goes, I will never be right. I would never do that to him. And then one of the detectives sneaks in. But you did. And she goes, not intentional. Not intentional. You know, she's, she keeps going, I would never have done that to him. And it's like, well, you did it. And then she jumps in quickly. Not intentional. No malice. And then I just a line that's just straight out of a clown horror movie. She goes, everything was fine and dandy. All right. Now, another strategy she has when she's not getting loud and going, this is horrific, and interrupting and bringing it all, I call it the epic speech tone, where all of a sudden she gets a little bit quieter, and it's like music, you know, inspirational music is behind her, and she'll go, you guys... When I tell you this, I love George. Love him. And then a little bit later, she's doing one of these like speeches, you guys. I love George. I would have done anything. She goes, I love him. I love him to this day. And it's like, it's only been one day. You killed him yesterday. Hopefully it would last one day, Sarah. I love him to this day. It's almost like she's already in her head practicing like talking to her friends at the coffee shop years from now and they're like I'm so sorry it was such an accident and you lost your husband and she goes oh I'm just a sad widow you know I I loved him I love him to this day and then here's one of the greatest at times Sarah will start a story a, a strategy, I guess, or, you know, a speech or whatever you want to call it, trying to just flip the whole way things are going, and she'll start it, and you can tell she has no idea where it's going, what she's planning to say. She is maybe the first person in interrogations I've ever seen trying to improv in real time what she's going with, and it's because of the video. She doesn't know what to do, but coincidentally the female detective right as she starts so sarah starts going i don't know what you guys want me kind of one of those what you guys want me to say but right before she started it the female detective just puts on the video it's not flipped around towards her but it, it's the sound so sarah starts this speech going i don't know and it's like sarah i can't breathe and sarah in real life is going I don't know what you guys want me to tell you. It was a good day. 
And then she pauses and you can hear from the video, fuck you, this is what you get. And it almost reminds me of like Howard Stern episodes where Fred, the sound guy, anytime someone on the show or a guest on the show was telling a story, maybe he would put like background music on that fit the mood of the story or he would do uh, like sound effects. It was almost the morbid version of that where she is desperately trying to say, I, I don't know what you want me to say in order for me to not be in trouble because I don't want to be in trouble. But the background noise is, babe, can you let me out? And her just going in her bat. She has like almost a Batman voice on the on the video like this is what you get when you this is what you get when you cheat on me completely horrifying so the video's playing while she's making up a story i don't know if i've ever seen anything like that in an interrogation and then as you can imagine oh yeah she goes this was not my intention in any way shape or form she loves doing that that phrase any way shape or form and they, of course, reference the video. And again, she leans back and goes, you guys are killing me right now. That's her safe word, her interrogation safe word. You guys are killing me right now. And then they ask her, which was going to come up at some point, even though the video is really the crux. But they said, why didn't you call 911 sooner? Which we've talked about before. You got to call 911 immediately. Uh, she goes, I didn't know what to do or how horrific it was. This is a 42-year-old woman with a 9-year-old son, and she didn't know that her husband being not breathing and being purple and stiff in the shape of a suitcase, she didn't know how horrific it was, so she had to call the ex-husband first. All right, so then they really, I think, by this point, they're thinking, we've gotten a lot. You know, she does the boy cries wolf thing. She said, yeah, George does the woe is me thing. But then they really zone in on, they want the reason why she didn't let him out of the bag. They want a reason why. Sometimes they use the word motivation. They want the, the reason. They want to know why. And she goes, there was no motivation. There was no motivation. I didn't plan on leaving him in the bag. But she says, okay, so they go, what is your reason for not letting him out? He's begging you. It was obvious he wanted out. And she says, number one, I didn't know it was going to end like that. And the detectives, in a way, they accept that. They're like, all right, that's, you know. And she goes, number two, you know what? And again, this is going to be in the trial. She goes, number two, you know what? I'll give him five minutes in there. And she does kind of one of those, like, I'll just give him five minutes. Thinking that the detectives are going to go, yes, queen, give him five minutes in there. He was abusing you. You can do that. But so she goes, maybe I'll give him five minutes. And the male detective goes, five minutes for what? And she realizes that they weren't going to come along with her on the whole five minutes thing. And it actually shows that Maybe there was some malicious. No malicious. Um, and so she, he goes, five minutes for what? And she looks at the female detective and then looks at the male detective and gives him a look like, all right, you're not going to come with me on this one? They're going, why not let him out? And for the first time, she just she said every stupid strategy she has. She just goes, I, or, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And um, they're going, well, you, you said it was laughing. He was begging to be let out. And she goes, this is just perfect, too. She goes, see, it all backfired on me. She takes this attitude like, you know what? I tried to be wholesome and to have fun and paint, and it all just backfired on poor little goblin woman sarah boone i knew it would it always just backfires on me and then the male detective as you can imagine gestures towards the laptop with the video and she goes it's awful it's awful 
And she, I think, is realizing that it doesn't matter how, what strategies she uses, the video is going to be the end of her. And she's going, it's awful. It's awful. And they're going, yeah, it really is. And she, with nowhere else to go, she goes back to the, I will never drink again. Like, she always comes back to that kind of out of nowhere. I just, I will never drink again in any way shape or form and um, the female detective asked her if someone had you in the suitcase would you want to be let out and she goes um eventually i'm guessing i mean i don't i'm blaming the wine she goes like this i'm blaming the wine and the male detective just goes you're blaming the wine in that tone of voice, like really, after you went on and on about not drinking and not being drunk and how it had nothing to do with drinking now, you're loudly proclaiming that it was the wine. <laughs> I'm blaming the wine. And then, so the guy just goes, you're blaming the wine, they just sit there and she goes, oh, that's not going. And she goes, so you guys are assuming and they go, we're not assuming anything. And she just plows right past it and says again, so you're assuming that's what I did? And they're like, there is no assuming. We're just following the evidence. And she's going, I left a hole in the suitcase. There was a hole. I unzipped it with one finger. And the, <laughs> the male detective, I guess trying to get more on her level mentally or to communicate, he leans in and go, well, the damn hole didn't do him no good, did it? And she then gets quiet like she does and goes, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, and I always know what to do and how to do it. And again, it's just the video, and she's always been, I think, just loud enough to manipulate her way. She's one of those people that they think that they are so clever and cunning and win all these exchanges in life, and it really they're just so horrible that people don't want to be around them. So maybe she thinks, yeah, like, I really... I was able to get that rental car for free because I'm so good at lying or whatever it is. And the guy, poor guy at the rental car company is just like, this lady is horrible. Just have it for free. Whatever I got to do not to talk to you. And she goes, which is pretty funny. She goes, I would never do that to George. And the, they go, you did. She goes, not intentionally. Know that. And the male detective goes, I don't. And she goes, know that. And he goes, you got up and went to bed. And then there's a pause and she goes, alcohol is a shitty thing. And whenever she goes back to the alcohol, they don't come in to save her or to fill in the time. So then it leaves her just being like, it is. Trust me. Okay. Okay. All right, so it goes back and forth for a little bit, and then Sarah goes, all right, tired of just getting wiped all over the place. She goes, I am leaving it like this. I did not intentionally do this. No malicious content or effort was towards this. And then she leans way in and goes, no malicious. And the detectives are pretty much done at that point. I think they feel... You know, the, the I thought he was woe is me. It was the boy that cried wolf. For all this stuff, it kind of, you know, I'm blaming the wine. It kind of add up to confessions in a way. And so they're not really worried about her, you know, going on and on with the same nonsense as she has. The female detective just says, we were trying to give you an opportunity, but it is what it is. And again, she leans in and goes, no malice towards that. Okay, well, let's see. Where am I at? And then they bring up the video, and she, Sarah, reaches out and touches the laptop, and she says something true. She goes, because there's this, it doesn't matter what I say. 
anything I say is just, it comes back to the laptop. And the female detective goes, well, you're lying. And Sarah goes, who's lying about what? (laughs) It's like the video is right there, Sarah. They're like, that's a liar. And she's like, who are you pointing at? Who's lying? Where's the liar? Who's lying about what? And she's going, I would do anything for George. He's really trying to like tie the whole thing into a nice bow and just get emotional and be like, I would do anything for him. They were like, except let him out of the suitcase. And then she says something that almost sounds like a Chris Watts type line. She goes, in no way, shape, or form was this intentional at all, ever. The female detective is largely done at this point. So she goes, all right, I'm going to go see. At the beginning of the interrogation, they said, oh, would you mind if a forensic expert comes in and swabs your under your fingernails to see if his DNA is under there. And at the very beginning, she goes, yeah, of course. And so the, that's still happening. And what it creates kind of a weird energy around um, the interrogation because they don't want to completely show Sarah that, you know, she's not going home today. She's going to be arrested. The whole thing's kicking off. But they also don't want her to be like, no, you know what? I'm not doing the DNA under the fingernails. You guys are just arresting me. They don't want her. They don't want to tell her they're arresting her because then she's going to blow up and there's going to be all of the, you know, emotions from that. So they're pretending, yeah, we'll just be done. We're about done. You're going to get the nails swabbed. And so up until this point, and really to the end, Sarah thinks 100% she's going home. And um, so the female detective's like, all right, I'm going to, after saying, like, it is what it is, Sarah, she goes, I'm going to go out and see where this nail uh, forensic woman is. So she, female detective leaves the room. Uh, the male detective and her kind of go back and forth. Um, the Male detective is saying that look, we talked to your neighbors and they just said you're pretty much drunk every day screaming at George. And uh, <laughs> Sarah's going, oh, okay, yeah, all right, yeah, drunk at every. Who told you that? And he was like, Kim, you're like your neighbor. And she, uh, he goes, oh, she goes, oh, Kim, yeah. Kim is not a nice person. It's like, oh, the type of person that would suitcase her fiance to death. All right, then the female detective comes in and is like, I don't know, it's taken a while. All right, Sarah, you said you had some questions and some concerns, so we can do that now. And you know how in these interrogations at the beginning, the detectives, they want the person to talk, and it's we're in this together, and we're, you know, they're doing everything they can to keep them going, and they don't want to scare them into clamming up and all this stuff well that all that is kind of over they're not pretending to be sarah boone's buddy anymore you know in this to figure it out they're very much just like huh yeah sarah all right yeah we're gonna wait for the nail lady and then you're gonna be arrested but we're not gonna say that so we're just gonna kind of sit here in silence or say very little and it just shows you how good silence is in these interrogations because they almost get a better interrogation once they decide, yeah, we're just kind of kind of sit here and wait for the nail lady because Sarah then is like, so when you guys say, you know, she's like has to start asking them questions. But um, as I said in the first video, Sarah to appear like a concerned widow that lost her man in an unfortunate hide and seek type of thing accident she brought in a list of questions and concerns to ask the detectives i'm pretty sure she thought that they would start out the interrogation like that she didn't think that she would be beaten over the head and show the torture video and not be coddled at all and it just went unimaginably horrible and then it hilariously absurd now after she's been beat over the head with a club they're like all right what is your questions and concerns so for the record sarah boone's questions and concerns she starts out by going so am i getting my phone back they said no what happens to lucas will i get lucas's laptop back no 
And she goes, so his parole officer, do you all inform her or should I? And they go, I don't know. We don't, we, we're not going to inform her. Why would we inform her? And Sarah goes, well, cause she's the, because of the nice lady that she is, I thought that we should tell her. And they just go, we, no. And Sarah's going, okay, these concerns aren't making me look like the concerned widow I was hoping. And then she goes, uh, number five, other than this, and she reaches out and touches the laptop, so initially, what was the cause of death? And they're like, I don't know, Sarah. We're th 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 the investigation is still going. And she goes, okay, um, so I don't know if you all know how to do this because I, uh, so that's what I was going to ask you. So are you updating his parents today? And she, this whole thing of like, are you going to, like when you talk to his parents, are you going to tell him I did? That's what she goes. And then the male detective goes, did what? And again, she goes, I don't like I don't like where that's going. And how psycho is this? She asks, "Can I call his former employ the guy his former employees that he worked with and tell them?" And they're going, "You can do you can make whatever phone calls you want, Sarah." Thinking in their head, "You're going to be arrested in about 20 minutes, Sarah." So all this stuff will will humor you and give you short answers while we're waiting for the nail lady, but none of this is going to happen. And she goes, Ah, uh, poo! this one, she should have left this one out. I think this one might come up in the trial too. So, and even she knew this was a little bit rough. She goes, how do I go about getting his wedding ring, his engagement ring back? I bought it for him. And they're going, well, it was on his finger. It's going to go to the medical examiner. And then that's a civil thing. Since it was on his finger, it'll go back to his family. She takes a little piece of paper, like spikes it on the table and goes, well, so I'm not getting that back. It's like, you probably should have just left that one out. Again, you're trying to paint yourself in the best light, not a torturous murderer. Maybe don't ask about the wedding ring just yet. And then she goes, when will the results of, the, of this? And she holds up some of the forensic stuff and they're like, we don't know. And then she really gets into the, so what's next? And she really wants them to tell her, you know, you, well, you need to plan on this. You got to be prepared to this. We're going to arrest you this or we're not going to arrest you. And she goes, I mean, like, so like, you can just see how frazzled she is. She goes, I mean, like, so like, like, I don't understand. I don't know if you guys just going to like, because it makes it sound like to me I'm being accused of something that was not intentional, but I'm being accused of it. So what should I do about that? And the female detective goes, you want me to tell you how to not be accused of a crime? And uh, she's like, all right. <laughs> And um, then she asked, totally crazy. She goes, who is going to, how do I find out about the funeral? It's like, oh God, Sarah, again, not a night. Don't, it doesn't, it's not making you look sane to ask when the funeral is for the guy you zipped up to death. And the final one, she goes to the female detective. She goes, can I call you like I did uh, like I did already? And the female detective goes, yes, my phone is an open line. And the male detective now is like, all right, the hell with this. I'm going to go check where the nail lady is. He grabs the laptop and heads out. And right when he leaves, her voice tone changes again. She has so many. And she goes... To the female detective, she goes, I get it. I get it. And the female detective, who thinks it's largely over, is like, what? She goes, that, uh, referring to the laptop with the video on it, she goes, that looks really bad. And I just need to know what to plan on. And she's going, I don't know. You know, the, the female detective is having a lot of getting a lot of pleasure by just giving her nothing. Just, I don't know. I don't know, Sarah. The way that you don't know, 
why you went upstairs. I don't know what's next. You know, I don't know. And um, I get, she's like, I get it. I get it. And then she, uh, Sarah goes, I promise on Lucas, which is her son. I promise on Lucas's life. Thinking this was going to be like the big, oh, you do? You promise on your son's life? All right. Cancel everything. But she's going, I, and I promise on Lucas's life. And the detective is going, all right, I don't know you. I don't know what's true, but you, you promise on his life? Okay. And then the male detective comes back and they're waiting in silence for a while while Sarah is just basically will sit there and then say something like, so I just need to know what to plan on. I don't want to be at home and you guys come and Lucas is there. I just, it's like you guys know, being knowing more than I know, you could tell me like, you know, you want to plan for this or you want to plan for that. And I just don't know what to plan for. So if you guys could, and the detectives are just kind of not saying much, just waiting for the nail lady. And um, let me see if anything left before the nail lady. Uh, Oh, yeah, one last thing before the nail swap. So, again, just long silences and sitting there. Everybody's worn out. And then just a quiet voice, she goes, I think that getting him out is punishment enough. I think that's why I haven't slept. I think right there, that's something. And it just falls totally flat the nail lady finally gets there it takes about 15 minutes and what's funny while the nail lady is getting her stuff ready to swab her nails you can see uh sarah quickly and like frantically trying to scrub under her nails like mm, i'm trying to get this off and they do the nails takes a little bit and then that lady the forensic lady leaves the female detective and the male detective sit back down in the female detective goes okay sarah you're not free to go and sarah's face just like what this whole time i thought i was gonna go home and prepare and figure this out and it was unintentional no malice unintentional and she really and they're going um you're not free to go and then you see the male detective kind of like go like this and the female detective goes okay yeah, sorry. At the very beginning, I was supposed to swear you in on this little interrogation. Do you swear that everything you said today is true to the best of your knowledge? And and Sarah's going, uh, what? Is it true to the best of my knowledge? And they're like, yeah, it's not a trick question. We just forgot to ask you, just like we asked you yesterday. Is just everything you said today true to the best of your knowledge? And she just goes, that it was unintentional. And they're like, yeah, all right. And then... The male detective looks at the female detective. It's very satisfying. And he just goes, and he says, okay, stand up, Sarah. Face the wall. And Sarah, who th thought somehow she was going home this whole time, stands up and faces the wall. And as, she getting, as she's getting cuffed, she goes, why is this happening? And he goes, because George is dead. And she goes, not intentional. And he goes, yeah, well, he's still dead. And then she starts going, so this was a trick. This was a trick. You guys tricked me. And it's kind of funny to think that you murder your boyfriend with a suitcase. You film the whole torture. You hand that video over to detectives. And then when they arrest you, you consider the whole thing a trick. So she's going... You guys tricked me to come down here. Someone needs to call Brian. That's where her son is at. Someone needs to call Brian. Lucas, her son, thought mommy was coming home today. Someone needs to call Brian. You were tricked me. I had a panic attack last time they brought me into jail. And they, as you can imagine, don't really care about any of this. And they're saying, well, be nice when you go into jail and they'll put you in the good spot. And she's just going, not intentional. And a, I guess like a, a beat cop or someone that works for the jail comes in and they hand her off and she's just going not intentional and they leave and the light turns off and just like that it's the end of the interrogation of sarah boone 
Woo! So, like I said, the whole trial starts, I think, in a month, unless something changes. Should be interesting. I'm sure we're going to see some chunks of the interrogation, and the woe is me, and the boy that cried wolf, and unintentional, and no malice, and I'm very interested to see how it goes. I'm going to cut it off there. This, day, this video is going to take all day to upload. I love you all. Why? Stiving why.